well. The Night Beat starts right now. Tonight, I'm announcing that I will direct all states, tribes, and territories to make all adults, people 18 and over, eligible to be vaccinated no later than May 1. A big plan laid out by President Joe Biden tonight. The promises he made during his first primetime address since taking office. On this day, one year ago, the world began to shut down for what we thought would be two weeks. Tonight, we take a look back and hear from one San Antonio man who nearly lost his life to the coronavirus. And a terrifying near-death experience for one woman pinned between her kitchen stove and a pickup truck. What happened? Still ahead. But first tonight, we begin with late breaking news. The Bear County Sheriff's Office tonight announcing termination papers have been issued for an off duty deputy after he was arrested today. Eric Solara is facing an assault with bodily injury family violence charge. According to BCSO officials, the 25 year old deputy has been employed with the Sheriff's Office since March 2017. The Public Integrity Unit will be doing a criminal investigation at the same time as the BCSO Internal Affairs Administrative Investigation. Details of the assault are unknown at this time. Some more breaking news tonight from the west side. San Antonio police are investigating a shooting that left one man dead. He was found with a gunshot wound to the chest inside of a car. Police responded to that scene just after 6 o'clock this evening on South San Augustine Avenue. The man was pronounced dead there at the scene by EMS. An SAPD captain says details on what exactly happened are limited. There was no witnesses to the shooting itself, just some people that were in the block that heard the shooting take place. The man has not been identified yet. Police don't believe it was a drive by shooting, but an ongoing dispute between the man and the suspect who has not been found. Now to a near death experience for a woman who was pinned between her stove and a pickup truck. That is after that truck came crashing through a wrought iron fence and straight through a brick wall into her kitchen. She has since been discharged from the hospital where she was treated for her injuries. The night team's Jonathan Cotto shares her story. I'm still in shock. I don't know how I, I, I don't know how I made it. Dorina Elison does in disbelief after what happened this morning. And I was pinned down. I was pinned down. The whole kitchen cabinets, windows, everything was on top of me. And then I just felt the, the pressure of the truck against me. Elizondo says she was in her kitchen preparing a meal when a truck plummeted into her home. She says her phone wasn't immediately at her reach. The lights were off. The plumbing was broken. Water was everywhere. I was yelling. I was terrified. I thought things were still falling. I mean, things were just falling everywhere from the roof and everything. Elizondo now heartbroken, asking the community's help in finding her eight-month-old pup, Sammy. I just got him for my birthday. My daughters gave him to me. <laughs> I can't find them. <laughs> we have a $400 reward. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. We have an update now on a story we first told you about earlier this week. San Antonio police now saying a missing toddler and his mother are believed to be in danger. And just moments ago, SAPD released surveillance video of them before they disappeared. Take a look at the video showing 20 year old Delaney Cherise and her 18 month old son, James Cherez. They were last seen on January 4th at a store in the 7100 block of Marbrock. Uh, anyone with information now urged to call the SAPD Special Victims Unit. The number there on your screen, 210-207-4093. We are learning new details about a man found dead in a crashed vehicle after being shot. That man was discovered in that wrecked vehicle at an apartment complex on Westward. That's not far from West Military Drive and Highway 90. At the time, police were not sure if the man died from the gunshot wound or the crash. Earlier today, we stopped by that apartment complex. We spoke with a manager who says at first they thought someone broke into the office. It's because I only saw the, the door that was taken out. But then uh, as I approached the door, I figured I saw the big hole in the wall. And uh, then, I, but I also thought just maybe a, someone lost control and, and hit it, but I never thought that somebody had passed away. That manager says the wall to a hallway and a bathroom were both damaged. 
Asian Americans facing more stabbings, more assaults and hate crimes due to the pandemic, according to a recent study. Here in San Antonio, study experts saw more than 40 hate crimes, but none against Asian residents. The night team's Patty Santos spoke with a member of the Asian community who believes hate crimes are happening here, but are just underreported. Everybody was so angry and they're looking for somebody to blame and to express that frustration, that anger. Romilette Metz, who is Filipino, says herself and others she knows were victims of hateful looks and slurs last year. I was called China. Hey, China. Go back to your country. Met says her friend, a Filipino nurse, was assaulted. This man, like two, three feet away, took his mask off and spat on her face and said, go back to China. You don't belong here and took off. But that crime was never reported. And that's the problem, says Professor Brian Levin. We know they're happening in Texas and they're vastly underreported. A report done by the Center for the Study of Hate and Extremism shows anti-Asian hate crimes increased by nearly 150% in 16 major cities last year, some captured on camera. Bottom line, he says, is words matter. In the past, when the president has spoken derisively about a group, for instance, President Trump last time around, uh, and a catalytic event, it was like adding jet fuel onto the fire. About 500 or so incidents actually included comments that were made by the president. Stop AAPI Hate tracks hate incidents against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. Some aren't necessarily a crime. Last year, they received more than 2,800 incident reports with over 100 of them from Texas. Hate in our communities is really unacceptable. Um, and that when we see something happening, we need to say something and to be upstanders for our fellow community members. Reported to police, if you are the victim of a hate incident, call, reported to an advocacy, advocacy group. Tim, Myra. Santos reporting for us live tonight. President Joe Biden tonight marking a somber moment in our nation's history. One year since the outbreak of the novel coronavirus was declared a global pandemic. He began his speech tonight by acknowledging the more than 527,000 lives lost to COVID-19. Biden saying that more than World War I, that's more than World War I, World War II, the Vietnam War and 9-11 combined. But on this occasion, he had some uplifting news as well, announcing all adults in the country should be eligible for a vaccine dose by May 1st. Every adult will be eligible to get their shot. And to do this, we're going to go from a million shots a day that I promised in December, before I was sworn in, to maintaining, beating our current pace of two million shots a day. And just hours before that speech, the president signed his first major bill into law. The $1.9 trillion relief package will send most Americans $1,400 direct payments, more if they have children. It also extends federal unemployment benefits through early September and provides billions more for vaccinations, testing, housing assistance, and struggling small businesses. Let's take a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers here in Bear County tonight. Metro Health reporting... 336 new cases tonight. That brings the confirmed total to 199,431. The seven day moving average is now 186 cases per 24 hours. As you see there, also five deaths also reported tonight. That brings the death toll now to 2,861. Taking a look at the hospitalization rate, 240 people remain in the hospital. That is down 10 from yesterday, 104 in the ICU, 63 on ventilators. A community health fair is happening tomorrow, hosted by Reverend James Robinson and Gospel Vision Ministries. That health fair will be tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's happening next to Chapman's Chicken on 1747 Southwest WW White Road. At the fair, you can get a free COVID test, speak directly with health experts, and get a new supply of safety items, things like hand sanitizer, gloves, and masks. Kamal County is starting a standby list for seniors that want to get the COVID vaccine. County officials are urging all seniors to sign up. The move comes as the state eligibility for vaccine will add those 50 years and older. 
as part of Phase 1C. Comal County public health officials say 16,300 residents have been vaccinated so far. We have the link to sign up on our website at ksat.com. CVS is expanding its COVID-19 vaccine allocation in Texas. The company is adding 74 additional pharmacies offering the vaccine to those eligible. CVS is part of the federal retail pharmacy program. 180 CVS pharmacies will now be offering the vaccine. And they're expected to receive doses as early as Saturday. We have more details on our website at ksat.com. And remember, you can find all of the stories we have done related to vaccines, like how the city is trying to make online access easier for Spanish speakers who are looking to get the vaccine. We have that and many more on ksat.com. Just click under the vaccine tab. Oh, well, I hope you had a wonderful Thursday getting closer and closer to the weekend. Still warm out there this evening. We're sitting at 70 degrees. Our high temperature today just shy of 80 after a morning low of 66. So both our afternoon high and morning low above average for this time of year. That trend will continue for the next couple of days. But Saturday night, a front moves through. That'll bring a chance of storms and some slightly cooler air as we head into Sunday and early next week. Details on this weekend cold front coming up in just a bit. All right, thanks, Katie. Still ahead on the night beat, millions of fish dead after last month's winter storm. That includes here in San Antonio. We have the numbers and the place that was most affected. COVID literally almost killed me. And coming up in just a bit, a San Antonio man who was on the brink of death sharing his recovery journey with us on the one-year anniversary of COVID-19. He nearly lost his life to the coronavirus. And tonight he is reflecting on the one year anniversary since COVID-19 was declared a pandemic. Quinn Britt was diagnosed with the virus in July. He didn't know he would be in the hospital for several months or that it would change his life forever. COVID literally almost killed me. 129 days in the hospital, about a month in the COVID unit, about a month in ICU, and then two more months in rehab. This was Quinn Britt last year, intubated and placed in a coma, fighting to stay alive. I am so blessed. Uh, so many of the folks who were in the COVID unit when I was there died. Today, Quinn can walk a mile without a walker, a big difference compared to when he was released from rehab in November, just in time for Thanksgiving. Still getting therapy for my legs and for my hands to try and restore a full functionality. I don't have any lung damage. I don't have any heart damage. I don't have stroke or any clotting issues. And that's, uh, I'm very blessed that I don't have any of those residual kind of effects from having COVID. As he looks back now, one year into this pandemic, he warns it isn't over. Regardless of what your rights are, do what you can to protect yourself. You do not want to get this disease. Although Quinn hasn't fully recovered yet, he looks forward to that day. He's now happy he's got a second chance. So are his kids, grandkids, and his wife. I just feel extremely blessed by God that I'm still here to be able to have this conversation. So many people who were in my circumstances back in July and August are not here to talk to you. And I feel very, very blessed that I am able to do that. So good to see him and how far he has come. Quim says he is optimistic about one day not living in a pandemic. Quick housekeeping note uh, in our daily uh, numbers, we showed that it was 336 new cases. It is actually 366. We apologize for that mistake. In the meantime, if you want to take a look back at how the pandemic started and how it evolved, head over to our website at ksat.com where we have all kinds of information. Last month's winter storm killed at least 3.8 million fish along the Texas coast. Officials are calling this the largest fish kill event since the 1980s. Texas Parks and Wildlife Department officials releasing the news yesterday. According to the department, the upper and lower Laguna Madre Bays off the South Texas coast were hit the hardest. About 65% of the total spotted sea trout that died were from those bays. And 78% of the black drum that died from the upper Laguna Madre. Let's take a live look outside with live cam on this Thursday evening. Spring break continues. The clouds continue to stick with us. The humidity is here and so is the wind. Yes, and all that will be in place again tomorrow. So pretty much this whole week, not a whole lot of sunshine. Nonetheless, if uh, it was your spring break or you had the kiddos home, I hope it has been an enjoyable week 
so far. Don't forget this weekend we've got some rain chances in the forecast, but we've also got Time change in the forecast. Yes, we spring forward. Yes, that's already happening. Of course, this is going to change our sunrise and sunset times. But what I think people get excited about, because, uh, you know, we talk about spring forward. This is when we lose an hour of sleep. But it's nice that our sunset times will get later. So this weekend, Saturday, sunset is at 641 by Sunday. Sunset is not until 741. So a little bit of good news for you there. Yeah, next couple of days, we're really not going to see a whole lot of change. Staying warm, windy, and humid Friday into Saturday. It is Saturday night that this cold front comes through with a chance of some scattered showers and a few rumbles of thunder. That is going to wash out all the cloud cover and the humidity such that by Sunday afternoon we are sunny, drier, and just really very comfortable with highs in the mid 70s by Sunday. So the upcoming weekend is going to be kind of 50-50. Sunday looks like the better day if you want to get outside. We've still got plenty of cloud cover out there tonight. Not a whole lot of rain to show for it. Uh, as we take a wider view out, there's a stationary front here producing some rain well off to our north and east. Uh, that system is moving east and away. We've got to look west for the incoming system that will bring us that front Saturday night. This storm system here, upper level low, is spinning counterclockwise beautifully here on our water vapor imagery. So this is still well to the west, sitting over portions of Nevada and California that has produced uh, um, plenty of precipitation across Southern California, even into portions of Southern Nevada as well. Eventually, this brings record snowfall to places like Denver and Colorado and up into Wyoming. Some places in Colorado could see more than two, three feet of snow all the way through the end of the weekend. For us, impacts will not be nearly that dramatic, but nonetheless, that storm system will bring a front into Texas Saturday night. This will be working into our westernmost communities late Saturday evening. Not getting to San Antonio until sometime after midnight. I think by tomorrow we'll really be able to hone in on hour by hour uh, with this front for you. But I do expect this to get to San Antonio sometime after midnight with a line of showers and thunderstorms in tow. Then this moves off to the east pretty quickly by Sunday afternoon. We are looking at sunny skies, really improving weather conditions. So as far as rainfall goes, this is just going to be kind of a quick glancing blow for us with this line of storms that moves through. So unfortunately, we're not talking about drought busting rainfall, but there could be some locally heavy downpours that maybe produce between a quarter and a half inch of rain. So again, not a drought buster, but hopefully a nice quick hitting dash of some heavy rain as this line of showers and storms move through Saturday night. As far as any severe weather goes, not really concerned about that. All the good energy is going to be way to our north. Nonetheless, off to the west, places like Del Rio, Brackettville, up to Rock Springs. There could be one or two stronger thunderstorm cells there that could produce some gusty winds. Otherwise, I think the biggest inconvenience here will be some rumbles of thunder late Saturday night when you're sleeping uh, that may wake you up a little bit early. And of course, that's when we lose an hour of sleep, so that may not be so much fun. Otherwise, no biggie, and it sets us up for a good Sunday. Temperature wise tonight, we're sitting near 70. It's still a touch breezy out there. We're really not going to see a whole lot of change tomorrow, so we'll start off 67 tomorrow morning with breezy winds, gusty at times again tomorrow afternoon. We could continue to see some wind gusts up near 35 miles per hour Friday into Saturday before some changes arrive. Guys. Okay, thank you, Katie. Now that he's parted ways with the Spurs, what's next for LaMarcus Aldridge? You know, that's a great question because right now, technically, he's still a Spur. But he's just not with the team. But where could he wind up coming up in the near future? When we come back, where is LaMarcus headed? We'll give you a few hints. And returning to the state finals after they were canceled last year. Coming up. Now that the Spurs and LaMarcus Aldridge have decided to part ways, the big question is where does the seven-time NBA All-Star wind up? The Miami Heat are reportedly interested in the 15-year veteran, but it's unclear if they're looking to make a trade before the deadline on March the 25th or wait until the Spurs buy out his contracts, which would make Aldridge a free agent immediately. Spurs head coach Greg Popovich made the announcement about the split before last night's 115-104 loss for the Mavs in Dallas to off the second half of their season. It was after that game we got to hear from LaMarcus's former teammates about his departure after being pushed to the bench. Lamarcus was a big, is, but was a big part of this team and has been for a long time. And he's done some really, really, really good things as a spur. And uh, I think it's the time to celebrate what he's done. You know, being one of the leaders on this team, we have to move forward. But, you know, Lamarcus, you know, you can't forget what he's done here. And, um, you know, not he's not just my teammate. He's my friend. I've known him since I was 16 years old. So I, I've texted him and, um, you know, obviously I'm wishing the best for him. 
All right, besides LaMarcus, fans will not be able to see DeMar DeRozan play tomorrow night when they are allowed back into the AT&T Center for the first time in over a year. DeRozan is returning back to California to attend a private funeral for his father who passed away recently. So here's the matchup. Late tip time tomorrow. Remember, 3,200 fans allowed more on this coming up in just a moment. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Committed. That is a word used repeatedly today by new Texans head coach David Culley. First appearance since he was hired as the Texans' new head coach following the disastrous 4-12 and season. It's also his first press conference since he met with video, by video I should say, with quarterback Deshaun Watson, who reportedly told Culley he still wants out of Houston. Now, we are very committed to Deshaun as our quarterback. Uh, uh, he is our quarterback. Uh, He's the only guy we got under contract at this time right now. Uh, Nick and our personnel department are in the process of, of looking at other guys out there right now. And, and we're going through that process daily, and, and we'll continue to do that. <laughs> Doesn't sound that committed, does it? All right, good luck to the Cole Cougars and the Antonio Apaches who are bound for the state title in their respective leagues for the Cougars. This is a chance to make up for what happened last year when their shot at the state title was ruined by the COVID-19 pandemic. When the UIL shut down the state basketball tournament in the Alamo Dome right after their victory in the state semifinals. Now that the Cougars credit, they are back in the finals, which will be played on the very day the tournament was shut down last year. You know, it was kind of depressing, you know, with everything that was going on. And, and at the same time, you never knew if you were going to get back or have another chance to do this. And for us to come back the, this very next year, um, it kind of makes a good story. It's pretty special for us. Because last year it got taken away. And the year before, kind of the same thing, you know. And finally get to play in the state championship and getting a chance to win it is really big for us. We're built for this. We're built for the Alamo Dome. We're built for state. We know we've been there before, so the pressure isn't on us. We just got to go out there and perform. All right, the tip-off time tomorrow in the Dome, scheduled for 2 p.m. And for Antonian, they'll be on the road at College Station, where they also play for the state championship tomorrow night at 8 p.m. And congratulations to the Antonian High School cheer team, who won an NCAA championship in competition held in Fort Worth on March the 7th. We'll be airing more cheerleading champs this week. What you need to know before returning to the AT&T Center, next. The Spurs will welcome back fans to the at t Center tomorrow for the very first time since the Spurs beat the Mavs on March the 10th, 2020. But before you head to the arena tomorrow, where only 3,200 fans will be allowed, Spurs Vice President and General Manager Casey Heverling makes sure you know what you'll need. The first thing that we're asking every fan to do um, is to go ahead and download the Clear Health Pass app. It's free to download. Uh, you can enter your profile uh, information and then the day of the game, before you leave to come here, fill out your questionnaire on that app and then that will make for a much smoother transition um, here at the security and health screening checkpoint before you get into the arena. We're going to have uh, social distancing cues on the ground for uh, any lines that may form. First thing you'll approach is, is our health screening. Welcome to the AT&T Center. I see you have your clear app available. May I take your temperature? Please. Once you get through uh, security, uh, that's your cue to pull up the Spurs app. That's the second application you need to make sure you have on your device. Uh, you pull that up, you're gonna, it's basically your remote control uh, to the arena. Uh, one of the most innovative things we've installed at the AT&T Center is this experience here. It's our zip-in drink market. Uh, you can upload your payment or you can do a one-time payment. You scan in, it recognizes who you are. There's a series of cameras in the ceiling mounted. So that's how it recognizes what items you picked up. And, and then it, it scans essentially with the cameras what you're, what you're ordering. Not too shabby. So again, Clear App and the Spurs app. And if you missed any of this, you can go to our Instant Replay page right now. We'll have the full interview for you there and what you need to know before going into the game tomorrow. And also, this Sunday happens to be the 28th anniversary of Instant Replay. Wow. So we'll have a little birthday cake. Wow. <laughs> I'll be here to celebrate. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Happy you. Happy early birthday. Thanks. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> we'll be right back. One more look at what you can expect the next couple of days. Warm, humid, and windy Friday into Saturday. Then Saturday night, that front sweeps through with a chance of some storms. By Sunday afternoon, mostly sunny, less humid, and 75. Guys? Thank you, Katie, and thank you for watching. That's it for the night beat. Good morning. San Antonio starts tomorrow at 4.30. Have a good night.